All right, we are now live. Uh, today is um, November 16, 2015, and it's the middle of our, we start the broadcast in the middle of our Reiki 2 class. It's uh, the first class, uh, Reiki 2 class for the human colony. And you can find on humancolony.org, and uh, the menu is Reiki. So now I will give a little summary. So Reiki 2 is for uh, symbols and for giving you training how to establish your Reiki business if you wish to. If you don't wish to establish a Reiki business, it's up. of course it's up to you, but at least we give you the tools to do that. So there is um, tons of Reiki businesses. Uh, Reiki has started <laughs> a long time ago, yes. And uh, it was for a long time. It was a secret Asian art. It it, it is still a secret art in uh, in Japan, which is traditionally transferred only to few people who are trusted, and also it's it, it could be expensive. But at some point, when Japan was uh, under attack by in, in the Second World War, the founder of Reiki decided, the founders of Reiki decided to let it out to the West. And they trained and dedicated the the special student who was sent to Hawaii, um, Takata Hawaii, it's a, a woman, and she made it westernized. She made it simpler and westernized. And actually her student made it cheap also. Her, her price was pretty high, but her students made it really cheap. and. One of the wonderful things that Reiki practitioners did, they didn't allow so far anyone to monopolize Reiki. Like many other things became mainstream and became monopolized, like massage in, Western, in the West, the acupuncture, the chiropractic things, and a uh, few other things you have to go through only through one channel, and you have to be certified, and and, uh, and you would get benefits from that, because when you finish the training, basically you have a super certificate, and and you don't have much competition, because it's only through one channel. But in Reiki, basically there is no major organ or no major organization, so uh, it went into many branches, there is many flavors of Reiki. And it, it gives lots of freedom because the regulation of Reiki is minimal. And you basically your protection is because you, it's more of a spiritual art than medical art. In uh, it's it's it has been discussed in many places and many times. You can look at, um, at the articles online about uh, uh, how how legal is Reiki, how is uh, how how it is. How people try to make it monopolized and regulated by the government, and so far we are blessed; it's not regulated by the government. And and this way, it's there is much more variety, and it's it's very short and inexpensive. The, the studying of it is short and expensive, so many people do that. So it has positive and negative sides. On one side, you compete with tons of others Reiki healers. There is tons of Reiki healers. You. You go to places and you find that everybody there is a Reiki healer with Reiki 1, 2, 3, or 4 certificate. Not everyone, but many people. And how do you compete to them, with them? And the answer is basically the competition is very minimal so far. It is still spreading. It didn't, it didn't reach the situation. You compete only when there is a situation. When there is no situation, by the, by the uh, supply, there is no saturated supply, uh, there is uh, still an opportunity, but basically, in most cases, you have to convert new people to Reiki and and uh, make them your own customers. It's very rare that the person is already into Reiki and they will find you. In most cases, it will be new people who who you just convert to Reiki and explain what it is. So much of the work you do is teaching what Reiki is. Now in Chicago, uh, in Rochester, Rochester, I believe it, it is in, in many senses is the capital of Reiki. How it happened, uh, it's a mystery. But if you Google 
number of Reiki hits in Roche, in, in, around the globe and then divide by the size of population. Rochester comes like maybe third from the, from the top or maybe first from the top. It's just amazing how it just where Roche, upstate New York, Rochester, upstate New York. So in Chicago, Reiki is not as popular, but when I was driving Uber, uh, about maybe 70% of people heard about Reiki. And when they speak about that, they, they mentioned that uh, they heard it in a positive way from, like, my girlfriend had her friend who had Reiki, and it was nice. And I, I drove a pharmacist. Uh, just being educated right now, he's finishing his college, and they had a class on alternative medicine, and that's where they learned about Reiki. Now, doctors and pharmacists in mainstream, they have classes about alternative medicine, say, so they know about Reiki. People who do massage, many of them get into Reiki, so I, I, would, I believe Chicago is the capital of massage. Massage is everything here. People eat, drink, and get massage. So. Massage offices are everywhere, and it's a very respectable way of life, and uh, people are massage therapists, uh, or, you know, they get massage, and they all learn about that. Acupuncture offices uh, have Reiki people here. I would say the ratio is one to five, five acupuncturists, one Reiki, and some people kind of combine the qualities of uh, say medical, Reiki, something else, or acupuncturist and Reiki, or uh, massage and Reiki, and so on. So, starting Reiki, I guess you have to be desperate. I was desperate, Jim was desperate. You have to be desperate to really start Reiki. When all other paths which are, you know, give you a lot of money are closed, then you discover that even that little which prov is provided by Reiki clients is sufficient. An advantage, obviously, as I said, is that you are your own boss. You define your schedule, you define your clients, and your bosses are your clients, basically. You have to satisfy them and be nice to everybody. But it's very easy to be nice to, to them because they are not as bossy as typical bosses. Um, the main mistake which everybody is doing when they start their business, they become obsessed about their websites, their registrations, their other things, and they spend all the energy establishing a new beautiful website, pay for it, tons of money, uh, get all the possible registrations, and then what? And then they find that you know, the clients don't come to them because to get the clients in is the skill is very different from from really establishing the formalities. You can obsess about formalities, but it doesn't really help to establish the clientele. It's called getting your clientele. That's the language. And it's common not only to Reiki, but also to other alternative healing arts. It's about the same market. Uh, acupuncture, herbalists, um, even psychics, even psychics and... Uh, uh, Ayurveda, yoga, yoga is big also, yoga is big in, uh, in Chicago, everybody is doing yoga. And, so, and yoga and Reiki classes go really well together because it is the same energy. When you do the healing on yoga patient, it is the same energy, you feel they're open to Reiki energy as, because they already practice the energy flow. So the art of getting, uh, and Thai massage also. The art of getting the clients is is an art which is, you, you have to learn it. It's an art which you can learn. And the key there is provide tons of free services. <laughs> provide tons of free services. First month you would be providing everything for free or or if you do it in the office, it would be you would only pay for the office, but not anything else. And that's how you get your clientele. That you establish the flow this way. There are alternatives, but that's how I went through that, and that's how Jim went through that. If Jim has time, he will describe his. But Jim had, you know, he would do Reiki weeks and weeks for like most of that would be free, and some of that would be very cheap tips, like very low tips, maybe. Uh, well, let's describe the prices. So, advertised price for Reiki, uh, for Reiki session is 
between uh, sixty dollars per hour and hundred twenty dollars per hour. That's advertised price. And if you go online to different offices, that's what they would say. They would have seventy, ninety dollars per hour, and sometimes they would have half an hour session, which is okay for returning people, but for new clients, you need you need an hour, and ideal to be hour and a half because you have to talk and explain what things are. And that's why you know then the client would understand and would come again next time. Um, the real prices are lower, and sometimes you give discounts. Sometimes uh, there are other incentives, but uh, sometimes people just can pay less. So real prices. It really depends on the place. If it is a city, it would be more, say, way, way more. And if it is a smaller town, it would be way less. So sometimes the prices are twenty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour, forty dollars an hour, and forty and fifty would be the most usual prices per hour. And again, you cannot estimate that you will work ten hours a day and get forty dollars multiplied by ten would be four hundred. No way you can make it uh, unless you have an established business, unless you have a secretary who takes care of the flow and the flow of the patient already exists. Um, so typically would get one patient a day or two patients per day and that's that's your expectations and you would maybe get three free patients and then one paid or three very little pain and one more pain and once in a while you get a big tip. Um, so that's an expectation. Uh, so the first place you go is Reiki Share and you just get into the Reiki community, be one of them, go to every Reiki share there. And uh, second place is health fairs. They advertise locally in local tiny newspapers, which you find in library and food for grocery store. There are little, little magazines with local events, and it would be a local health fair. But uh, the easiest way to find it by going to local hippie shop, psychic shop, crystal shop, they all, all these are hubs where all these local health fairs are exist. And for me, it was uh, initially was a prohibited world. I would never go to a psychic shop. Why would I go to a psychic shop? But apparently, Reiki and psychics are the same crowd of people. Same crowd of people. Reiki and psychics, same crowd of people. <laughs> tarot cards, tarot how do you call it? tarot card tarot tarot cards and Reiki go together. Yes, tarot cards. So they know the local Reiki people. They know the local health fairs. So start uh, hanging out with them and network. Networking is absolutely essential. So it's always nice to ask another practitioner, how did you establish your clientele? And when you say the word clientele and modality, you know, these are two key words which I used in alternative health um, health business, clientele and modality. <laughs> and don't overuse the word modality because it sounds, what is the word? Lame, lame. <laughs> All right, uh, so clientele. Um, the best way to get your clientele is through Groupon and Living Social. Groupon and living social. Groupon gives you, it, it takes about two, three weeks to establish it because they have the bureaucracy and it's it's very user unfriendly but they, you know, when I started my Groupon, they, I got, I think in a few hours I got maybe seven, seven patients. They bought the Groupons and then they came only a few months later when their Groupons were expiring. So, I established that in the beginning of August, in the middle of November, I was servicing these seven patients. But after a few hours, I just closed that. I had to call Groupon and said, no, 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 I, I'm moving out. I, I cannot take that many patients at once. So, so but, but uh, you have to establish your price properly and play with your price. And in Groupon, they have your limitations, how many times you can change the price. But basically, they... Um, Groupon takes half from their uh, from your from the price the, the client pays. So if the if you establish the price 
uh, that's that's you know crazy marketing. But in the Groupon, you say well, the price for my session is hundred hundred forty dollars per hour, and then uh, to, uh, for this Groupon coupon, I give you fifty percent off. So the, you pay the the patient pays seventy dollars for an hour session. And then group one takes half of that, of 70. They take 35, and you keep 35. And they allow you to do that only in established established offices. So you have to rent the space in the office. And this 35 is about how much you pay for to rent the space in office. So you work only to get patients without any money return. <laughs> but then you get the business going. You get you you get the you know to know people in the office and blah 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 and it starts rolling. That's how you start rolling and growing your business. Um, if you so, uh, Living Social exactly the same uh, same uh, calculation. They also take a say you know 140, 70, 35, blah blah. Uh, so, and it works because people somehow they love 50% off. When they see 50% off, there is a certain layer of people. When they see 50% off, they grab it, and they keep it until it expires, and they hurry to 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 cash it. And um, living social is different because you are in charge online. You can change your pricing, and you can have multiple deals, so-called deals. And you can play, turn them on and off. So, but you have to be careful and organized. You have to be really organized. Now, when Jim started his business, he bought his how do you call it calendar book, appointment book, and he uses it very carefully, very carefully, and he never forgets an appointment or never is late for an appointment. Jim is absolutely great. He would come always 15 minutes in advance to an appointment. I am not as good, but for me, it's also very important. I'm, I come right in time, but but I make extra effort not to be late. It's very impolite to the patient to be late, and also because many some of them are in pain, you don't want them to be disappointed. That would be contra con, counter therapy. If if they come and they they are neurotic and they find that you know the door is closed and you are not there, you have to be there. It's just part of the AQ. Being there in advance is part of the Reiki. So you cannot schedule them hour to hour. You have to give a, at least 15 minute cush, cush, cushion, or I would give like an hour cushion or half an hour cushion, big cushion between the patients, because you need time to recover. So um, when I started the business in uh, Chicago, it was very easy, I, uh, but it was also depressing. I didn't have a job, and I felt that nobody loves me. I felt that nobody wants me, that I ask for big favors from others, which is not true. You are all entitled to have your own business. You're all guided to have your own business. You're all loved, so don't be shy. You're always entitled to ask. But basically, I asked sent emails to different Reiki practitioners in the area on bike, biking distance, on biking distance, saying, uh, I'm in you in the area, and I got my Reiki, whatever degree I had. I think it was Reiki master at the time. And I want to establish a business. Uh, do you want my help? Do you need, um, do you have a place to practice Reiki? That's what I wrote. Very short letter. I mean, sometimes you want to eat longer. I mean, it really depends. Uh, but uh, I, I like really short letters because it's much easier to read and answer. And many people, especially in Chicago, everybody is on texting, SMS texts, and they are not on email even. You have to text them to, to get their attention. All the appointments, all the business on alternative healing is done through texting. No, no emails, no websites. That was a discovery for me. I will, was always on email side, and that is key, Chicago works through texting. And why? Because there is so much noise, so much spam. And phone is personal. You pay for it. It's, you provide your driver license when you buy the phone. So it's it, when, when the text comes to your phone, you know from who it's, you know really basically who, who is that. So it's always, you know, uh, a safety 
precaution, you know who is there. There is no way to fake, uh, very difficult to fake uh, uh, a text message. But for email, you never know who, are de who you are really dealing with, what's your real name. So everybody in Chicago is using text. And then I started calling. I, I, not everybody, uh, actually, no. Yeah, Reiki practitioners all answered to me, all answered. And most of the answers were polite, negative answers. And some of them I really liked their websites. I really wanted to meet them. And they were like completely closed. No, 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 no. We, we don't need help. We are fine. And then I got one practitioner uh, who wanted to speak to me. And that was Max's move. You know, I don't say you can do uh, it. Maybe it, it might not be as easy for you as it is easy for me. But I, I'm used to take video interviews. So I said, how about I take a video interviews and uh, for you and put you on YouTube? So one practitioner took that bait, and we did wonderful interview. And in the interview, she told me how she found, she established her business, and that was my way of finding the the tricks. <coughs> and then I just realized that Reiki businesses in Chicago are uh, renting Reiki practitioners in Chicago are renting places from uh, other other modalities, other places, massage, yoga, and uh, acupuncture. So the next step was take the bike and force yourself to bike to every, or at that time it was winter, uh, drive the car and take, uh, and just knock in all, every, every place around and give you a resume and say, here is my business card. Uh, do you need a... Uh, a Reiki practitioner, which wasn't easy. I mean, knocking on the door without invitation wasn't easy. But, you know, how do you call it? It's called intelligence by, by attack. In Russian, it, from Russian, it's translated intelligence by attack. From that, I learned tons, tons. So the best experience was one place which had Reiki, uh, massage, chiropractor, chiropractor, mostly chiropractor. It was owned by multiple chiropractors. So it looked very fancy. It was in the, how do you call it, in the basement, but looked very, very fancy. It looked like a museum. And there were a museum exhibits in a big hall and music and lighting and uh, decoration. It was wonderful. So there they put me on a wonderful chair. In front of me was a newspaper of a uh, hundred years old newspaper, which was a magazine, which was uh, fun to read. And I was pretending that I'm reading the news, uh, this magazine and waiting for the owner to come out of her session. She is a successful businesswoman chiropractor. And chiropractors, to get an education of chiropractic, have to study for four years, tons of hours. Uh, very seriously, and um, uh, there was a receptionist there who was taking calls and uh, taking payments. And from that, I learned tons how you really take the calls and how you really uh, treat the patients. And every patient he was speaking, she wasn't pushing at all. She was sending some sort of energy. It was clearly some sort of loving energy, but it was very powerful, very well tuned in, tuned to the patient, and every every call she would convert to a sale. That's how we call it in marketing. Every call into a sale. She was a salesperson, and every sale, returning patient coming out of the session very relaxed, she would gently sign up for the next session or for a series of sessions, give them a discount. Now understand that this marketing of like, I will give you three sessions and I will give you, say, 40% discount. It's not a deception. It's not a deception. If the patient is actually committing for three sessions, uh, it saves you so much labor on getting the patients, on scheduling them, on making sure they come, that you really can give them the discount because that's your labor saved. That discount they earn by signing up for three sessions. So, 40% discount for three sessions, for 
for for three sessions uh, sign up is is amazing and it works or you know all variants of that if you pay now you get 10% discount if you pay later it would be more expensive so all of these tricks they work because because that's how the business world works at these days now why it is so difficult to advertise and find patients because there is tons of deceptions and because everybody's communication channels are blocked by dishonest advertisement dishonest advertisement kills everything it's you know it really well you wouldn't open emails just because they look like advertisement you wouldn't even the most truthful advertisement, if it was on your door printed in color, you wouldn't take. Just because everybody has these filters these days. That's how things are spoiled these days. The information is messed up. Everybody is afraid of deception. In Rochester, establishing a new business was really, really, really difficult because people go through friends and through familiar businesses, established businesses, because there is so much deception, it's really hard to, for a new business to squeeze in. In Chicago, it's little more newer people, younger people, more of people who are looking for new ways. But again, the main chains, the main established businesses have preference because people trust them way more. So that's why advertising in old way, like on the website or... Um, in um, in the print or hanging on the doors or in the magazines just doesn't work. It's like zero response. I did everything, and my friends did everything, and it just doesn't pay off. Doesn't pay off. So don't waste your money on the website. Uh, business cards. If you're really sure, if you have money, yes, do. It's very cheap to do business card these days. Vista Print is the uh, classical way of doing it, Vista print. Uh, but um, if you don't have that money, just printing it uh, on a piece of paper and cutting with the scissors, black and white, your name and, and, and phone number and email is just sufficient. Don't go crazy on, on their decorations. Like super glossy business card is nice. I really like my photograph on the business card because like when it lays, uh, when you when when they all kind of spread on the table, um, you, you it's easier to remember who you are. Just to recall, you know, if they all you know, some people collect tons of business cards and then they don't remember which one is one, which one is which. Handwritten business cards work perfectly. If you just write your name and your number, works perfectly. And also these days, you don't have to hand the business card to anyone. You just connect to them by texting on the phone and that's even better than a business card. Okay, newsletters are great. My uh, teacher, my and Jim's teacher, Barbara Carlton, does her newsletters and they're very uplifted, uplifting. And she does it not too often and you know she goes at extremes. She kind of schedules classes and sessions and stuff and webinars for half a year ahead and, and she keeps the calendar and uh, most of the events she schedules never happen because people don't sign up for them, but they all are scheduled there for people to call and sign up. Uh, Jim and I, we don't we don't do that. We schedule minimum. We have regular events. Jim does his Saturday webinar, free webinar. That's free advertisement for his channeling paid channeling sessions and for his Reiki sessions and it works absolutely beautifully. So basically establish some sort of free free services which you provide regular, regularly and that's where you get your clients. So I regularly go to these health fair events where you provide many sessions, 15 minutes each. Um, it's organized by someone else it was like that in Rochester and it was it is like that in Chicago the only difference is that in Rochester most of those events were flukes uh, you come there you even pay for participation but there is no one no visitors except the providers you have a wonderful uh, crowd of providers which advertise to each other which is very depressing 
there is psychics, uh, tarot readers, uh, crystal shops, incense, and um, uh, essential oils, which I love all of the above. And uh, like jewelry, uh, light worker jewelry, Reiki, uh, massage, uh, that's a typical crown, chiropractors, um, different Chinese Eastern arts. And in Rochester, it's all psh, almost never have a people, except one once a year they have successful one. And others, they just come together just to have fun with each other. They don't even expect the customers to come. Once in a while, they get customers, but very rarely. And one of my friends always makes sell there because she is a good jewelry maker, very talented artist, and beautiful by herself. And she just get, have wonderful sales. You know, people she sells to the other practitioners, and it works just fine. But for establishing Reiki business, it didn't work. In Chicago, there are events like that, but they are well well populated. Like um, I go to this Sat Nam Yoga monthly event, which lasts usually four hours or eight hours, and um, <clears throat> for ten dollars you can provide your services. You pay ten dollars, and then you establish your either you bring your bed, Reiki bed, or you uh, you just put. Um, a mat which they provide and you do it on the floor and <clears throat> there the 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 flow of clients is of people is like tremendous it's like two big rooms are packed with people and they all all do the things and suggested donation is there like a one dollar per, mi per minute so typically you do a uh, 15 minute session and sometimes you get three dollars sometimes you get five dollars sometimes you get fifteen dollars uh, but you kind of get your uh, hands on things start rolling. Still, things start rolling this way. Uh, you meet other people, you chat in between, and of course, established good practitioners. Somehow, people sign up to them, and less established, like they sit there without anybody signing up. So again, uh, what I found that I just go around, find people who I like, and say. I'm available now. Do you want a session? And 50% of the time, okay, 30% of the time they want it, and 70% of the time they say yes, maybe. But I'm with that person right now. But I will look at into your and, and. But you have to be there, and there is like sign up sheet for every 15 minutes. They give you that sheet, and it says um, your name, Reiki helps for that, that and that, and then there is. Uh, time when they sign up for that time and that works perfectly and it's practiced everywhere how oh, that's like little little um, demo sessions little demo sessions now we also go to uh, events where Reiki practitioners and other practitioners provide free services in hospitals and also in uh, uh, gym goes in Rochester we went to uh, YMCA once a month and also there was uh, Barbara our teacher Barbara Carlton uh, she st she went to um, how do you call it uh, it's a big conference with, you know cancer something or blood something or heart something like big health event mainstream health events that's called mainstream health events and there people just provide the booth and now people already get used to seeing Reiki like not not often the people get surprised. They just again the sign up sheet and you provide free services and after your service you say here is my card. It can be handwritten. You don't need thousands of cards, you need like few. You can do handwritten cards. Handwritten works best. Um, <sighs> newsletters, of course you don't want spamming. People hate spamming. You don't want to spam. You want to make sure everybody on your list is um, is they gave you your, their emails and they welcome your emails and now the rules are you have to provide unsubscribe link um, so for the first say 30 people you don't have to go in any technology 30 people or 60 people you can just make a list and send to the list in your Gmail whatever make sure make sure to use BCC so the people don't see the emails where you send it because once in a while somebody answers to the whole list and upsets the whole list or even worse they start sending their advertisements to the whole list 
Some people do that. They just, and I do that sometimes too. They just take somebody else's list from their email and just send send your advertisement out. Uh, I do it only when I feel it's appropriate, uh, but um, and only to the list where I know the people. But you know, put your lists email list in BCC. Send it from yourself to yourself and uh, provide them the option to get out of your list. We get some upset customers just from, you know, from sending the extra uh, newsletters. And uh, we, we really, I learned by, you know, on, in a, uh, I learned to be respectful for people not what wanting more you know, newsletters. Now, how do you write your newsletters? The more color, the worse. The more, the, be, the more simple text, the better. Plain black on white is, without any formatting, works best. Just because people, when they see colors, they think it's advertisement, they just trash it right away. So be short, uh, describe what you provide. They want to know the prices, uh, how to schedule, when to call, and uh, if there is anything free or discounted. So start from free stuff go into discounted and at the end provide some free write-ups. If you can write about Reiki or about anything, if you can write some free stories, that's what would be what would be good. Or you can pu publish a beautiful blog with uh, images somewhere and then just do a link to that Facebook, no, to link to that thing, not Facebook. Facebook you can link because on, it's only for, for, I don't know, Facebook is a, I'm not sure about it. I think Facebook also can link, yes, but it doesn't. It has to be for public, not for friends only. <sighs> Any questions so far? Is everybody sleeping? We're not sleeping. We're here. Yeah, right. not sleeping, Max. Any can questions and comments? Can you hear me yet? Yes, you're good. Yes, we can hear you. Oh my goodness! Hmm. But we don't I see you. See your picture. Hi, that's, it. that's fine. If it's, you can hear me, that's the most important thing. One thing I forgot to mention: um, buying a Reiki table is a good investment. Both time I bought two Reiki tables. One I donated to Jim or paid him for a session with the table, uh, and another one I bought here in Chicago again because. Uh, it's just something you have to have. Uh, it's a typical massage table. I like big, bigger ones, and I uh, I shop around on Craigslist, and um, once in a while you can find for fifty dollars uh, a almost new Reiki table, almost new massage table. Um, there are different designs, but I wouldn't worry much about it. I mean, if you're not as strong, maybe you want a lighter one. But having a portable table is wonderful because you can always set it up in your place. You can always take it in your car on the back seat and go to someone else. And um, some people are afraid to come to houses, to your uh, home. So they uh, meet you in your office, but then they can come to your home so you don't have to pay for the office. OK, I didn't finish the story about the offices. So after I realized how it works, that I can get the clients through Groupon, and then I need, uh, for the Groupon, I need to get an office, I just took my bicycle and went around, and again, because I was depressed, it took like one trip a day, but I forced myself to go out and ask around. And it became very easy, because when you want to rent a place, you are not asking for any favors, you're just one of the customers. So the Reiki uh, practitioner is another customer in the office. So the business is you have an office, you rent out spaces to different practitioners, and it could be on a fixed schedule or flexible schedule. It's, it varies. And um, so I drove around, and uh, some places didn't want any to rent any. Some, some weren't compatible with Reiki, but there were like uh, four places which were perfectly compatible with Reiki. One place was interesting. They just fired, I guess, or old practitioners ran away from it for some reason. I guess there was a conflict there. So the owners just were eager to rent the space. 
and the place was wonderful. Uh, the price was good. The play and a perfect, uh, how do you call it? Perfect situation there was that the, the place already had a flow of clientele. People were coming for massage and wellness. It's called wellness services, where basically you have a workout uh, machines and you have a, a trainer, a coach who would coach you how to do wellness and. Uh, so it's healthy people coming all the time. And there you can put your business cards. You can uh, provide free lectures. Again, I offer free lectures for Reiki. Mm -hmm. Offering free stuff is important. And again, if you establish a relationship, people can do referrals. Uh, referrals is something when uh, others people refer clients to you. and. It's generally considered to be a poor practice to pay for the referrals. So if they refer to you, basically it's expected that you refer to them, but not pay with the money. So getting referrals by money is not a very kosher, not very appropriate way of doing things. All right, and then the second office was perfect in a way it was a uh, reiki oriented office. It's called Tribe. And it has the idea of multiple practitioners coming together, some of them founders and some of them just renters. And it's all designed for just rented part time. The prices were a little more expensive, but they had so beautifully organized everything. There was a big class area and a big, and a six small offices, absolutely uh, uh, beautiful, clean, well designed. Uh, there is a that quiet atmosphere, the extra um, curtains and a door, and it's all, and no secretary, it's all automatic. So there is a code on, a lock, lock on the thing, and automatic, uh, you, rent, uh, you reserve your time over on online, so that's a beautiful place. Uh, our uh, Barbara Carlton, our teacher, she had three different places. One was, first was too expensive, so she basically spent more money than she earned from her business, but it was very beautiful. All wood, and she had a Reiki um, rooms, and also the classroom, and a store with different uh, stones and incense, stones and incense, and uh, jewelry. Uh, so then she decided she wants something cheaper and simpler, and they moved, and she went at extreme, it was far from the civilization, very cheap, it was like $300 a month, which is nothing. Uh, big space, beautiful, new, all wood, no internet, and impossible to find on the map. So people would be lost all the time. So that was a disaster, uh, business-wise. But, but it was a nice place. We had uh, nice meetups there and had classes there. But uh, to bring the patient there was, was almost impossible. And the third place is kind of optimal, not too far, not too close, not too expensive, not too cheap. But she already had, a, you know, all the patients. One of the <coughs> key things which is important is uh, to remember who are your patients, to really have attachment to the, to have a relationship. Jim is really good with that, and I am mediocre. Some patients I just don't remember. I I don't remember even the names. Uh, so. My return rate is low. Some people have like 100% retainment rate. They, if someone like they, they get it, you know, they work really well. They speak really well. They give them a perfect friendly consultation. They give them uh, the sense of recovery, well-being, and uh, you know, that's you know, really depends how happy you are, how professional you are. And they, you know, what they discover, many of the practitioners are very different when they speak to the client than when they are like a normal life. Normal life, they are normal energy flow. When the client, they kind of really, especially that's a Chicago style, your client is your best friend. In Chicago, your client is your really best friend. You, they like best friend. They give you all the love possible. So, um, so that's something to consider. It takes understanding how things work uh, and it takes kind of being with other practitioners to see how they work. You know, if you meet other Reiki practitioners, always ask, how do you s establish your clientele? How do you retain your clientele? 
what's your typical uh, way of um, charging and uh, and uh, discounts and stuff? And uh, how do you do your newsletters? <sighs> charging. Um, PayPal don't is not used by many people, so don't expect to do PayPal. Cash is great. Um, and now people use uh, Chase Quick Pay. It's uh, Chase's and several other banks also do that. Uh, Chase's way of doing the the transactions. Um, it's similar to PayPal except that the money come like in a week or three days to a week. So Chase Quick Pay, Quick Pay is accepted by many. And also PayPal allows you. I think it's almost free. I think it's free. It allows you to buy this little thingy, so you can slide the a credit card and charge money to PayPal. It costs. They don't, I don't think they charge you upfront, but it costs about three to five percent per transaction. I think. Yeah, and Square does that too. Uh -huh. Square. Yep. Square what? Just Square. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think PayPal is. I, I just uh, looked at the reviews and went with PayPal, but I lost that little mm -hmm. dongle right away and. I think I charged only once somebody through credit card. I don't think it was as needed as I thought. Also on PayPal you can just write down the credit card information and then charge later. I don't think it's a good practice because people somehow are afraid that you will charge them extra. So Dangle is kind of safer. Um, and that's about it. Uh, the formalities. I know Sabrina and Guru Dan like formalities. Um, uh, I will share with you my uh, a waiver form. Waiver form, I will send it out. I will show you the waiver form and I never use it. I will use it only when uh, it's an office and I have to. Uh, at some place I wanted, I, I went to a, how do you call it, a fair and they wanted uh, to have a waiver form protecting the fair from any claims so I used it there. but. I believe the less formalities, the better. Uh, you are working in a spirit space where it's not a medicine, so why would you use? And that's, you know, if I have any doubt that the client would have any concern, then I would explain that it is spiritual, it's not medicine. We are not replacing medicine. All right, the homework. Um, so the Reiki symbols, three Reiki symbols, please practice them. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. I all showed you only one, the second and third. I didn't have to, I didn't show you, but in the folder where there is the manual, I placed that uh, file with the order how Reiki symbols are drawn. And we'll basically, when you learn how to draw them, we'll discuss them uh, at the next class. All right, Jim. Uh, I'm Can late. you still hear me? Yes, you're good. You Yay. move your head. Wonderful. Move your head a little up. So I mean, the camera a little down, so your head goes uh, higher in the screen. Is that good? Up. Camera down. Head up. Um. Camera down. Just the. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Almost perfect. All right. Because well, for me, it looks like my head's chopped off. Yeah. Just a little, a little backward. A little, a little. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Touching. Yes. That's perfect. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right, very good. Well, he's been. I don't know. You has anybody gotten there? Downloaded their books, their Reiki class, Reiki two books. Yes, I got my uh, two and three. Okay, very good. When you're going to, it is very important that you know how to do these symbols properly, how to write them and uh, do them properly in your head, because you will be using them when you're working on the uh, clients. So I think um, what I would like to do, I, of, of course none of my computers have been very cooperative today, so um, I did have some things printed out, but without the rest of it, it just it doesn't make any sense. So um, I will be talking to you and going over the symbols with you from the book, okay? If, if you have your book with you, or have pretty have have you all printed it out? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, that's the one. Yes. But people can open it from the screen, right? They don't have to print it. Right, they can yes. open it from the screen and um, look at the 
symbols, but you have to know how to draw them because there is a certain way they have to be drawn. And um, I think they give you the uh, how to do that in the in in there, like with the Choku Ray, the Seheki, and the Hanshaw Zeserun. Yes, very good. Yep, there there they are. Thank you. And um, some people look at that and go, "How am I ever going to remember how to draw that?" Is anybody uh, looking at that and saying, "Oh no, that looks like a lot of memorization." <laughs> I'll tell you guys, I did that. I remember when I first, years ago I saw Reiki, I was like, there is no way I'm learning those symbols. Like, well, I was so lazy, but it's actually, not that I would just trace them. When I when I got to a place where I wanted to, I was like, oh, I just traced them, and, that, and then it was that easy. Okay. It'll become well, second nature. And I'm going to do them, uh, I'm going to show you in the air what they look like. I have print, I'm trying, was trying to print out the Hanshalze Shonen and the Seheki and everything else. Of course, it won't print out from my computer today. So uh, I'm thinking, oh, that'll be just really simple. I'll be able to print it out and show them and then go through the, the actions of how to do it. Oh, my printer is not I have. Helpful. I have them if you want. Okay, yeah, they're right here, Jim. I'll I'll okay. just keep I I'll keep it on for you. Well, the one she's showing right now is the Hanshaw's they show none. Is that correct? That's the last one. Yeah. Yes. And um, the Hanshaw's they show none is very is one of the very important ones because it's a it's one of the it's the long distance healing symbol and it's also uh uh. The Christ in me meets the Christ in you symbol, and it's 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 a wonderful energy symbol to learn, and not only for long distance healing, but for being uh, uh, bridging a gap between any one of your clients that you may not know very well, or or feel uncomfortable with a little bit. I would do the Hanshaw's Day Show and then with them right away because it would be the Christ in them or the, the God-like being within them meets the God-like being within you. And that's a very comforting kind of feeling. Don't you agree? I'm sure that your books have all kinds of descriptions of what it means and how to use it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, it's a very comforting and close symbol that um, is brings about some closeness with your client, even though they may not feel that. Remember, they're intending to be healing themselves as well as you helping them heal. Our, the intention for the whole healing is that they know that your energy and their energy and the, all the energies that are helping are coming together to come together in them so that they can heal whatever it is that they are heals, healing. So the Han Shaze Shonen is a good one for just getting to feel a little more closeness with them. Of course, uh, you have that time before you start your class or your time before you start your Reiki that you can talk to them and find out what's wrong and verbalize all the different things that Yes, there you go. That's a choku ray. <laughs> and it shows you exactly how to do it. One, two, three. Now, if you have trouble doing this, if you have trouble drawing this because your you, your circles don't seem to go around real well, remember that at the bottom here, see at the bottom where the line comes down and hits the bottom, there's sort of a flat spot there. Do you see that sort of flat spot? You need a flat spot there so that your circles can be rounded. Now, you say, why would you need that? Because if you just start curving right away, it just starts, it doesn't look right. You have to have this little flat piece at the bottom. And then it curves around and around and around. And you see, if you count how many places where the um, the lines inner inner interact together there's one two three four five six seven those are uh, the 
seven chakras, okay? So the Chokru Ray has put the energy here in your chakras, which is also in your body, but you can also say put the energy everywhere, which is all throughout the body. So uh, it depends. Some people learn different meanings for these different signs, but learn how to write it so that it's easy for you. We're gonna, we are going to have, I am going to have you write the symbols on the last day and show me your page because it is important that you know your symbols and how to write them. Why is that? Because when you get somewhere, you're not going to have this book to use to do your symbols. You're going to have to have them in your head. You're not necessarily going to be drawing them in the air, but in my, in my head, I do a lot of drawing. I, I draw the symbols in my head, or sometimes I draw the symbols in the air. You know, um, it's a wonderful thing. If you have a, I see uh, some of the Reiki people that are doing uh, their Reiki, they are, do, they are actually doing their symbols in the air. And they do them really fast because they need that energy now. They need whatever it is that, they're, that the spirit is telling them to do right at that moment. So yes, the Seiheiki is for emotions, for uh, different things of that nature, but it's a very powerful and energetic symbol that can do many things. But its main function, as far as I'm concerned, what it does mostly when I'm using it is it causes them to, their emotional pain to be relieved. You see, sometimes when people are feeling pain, it's not all phys it may seem physical, but it comes from the emotional. They have a lot of emotional things that they've kept inside. They've taken on other people's emotions. They have a build-up emotions, and they've been there a long time, and they're causing them pain. And so the seheiki is actually alleviating the um, the pain from emotions that they are feeling. Also, if they have grief or whatever in the present, it's also helping to relieve any relieve any of the uh, current emotional stresses that they're feeling. But a lot of people hold on to uh, uh, negative emotions for a long time, and so it turns into a, an illness or a disease or a pain or a, or whatever. And this will the seheiki will help to relieve that portion of the illness, that portion of the pain, that portion of the sickness that was caused by emotions. Anybody have a question about that? Okay. Um, we're going through these sort of fast. I would like to ask you, has everybody read about the symbols? Is there a question that you may have read in the book about any of the symbols that you might have? Um, I just got a book last so night, so, so I don't, I don't know. Okay. So, but they're the three symbols that, that are very important. The easiest of them is the Choku Ray, but Choku Ray is actually a very important one because it means put the energy here. Whenever I, or put the energy everywhere on the body. Now, it depends on what you're using the Choku Ray for. If you're using it for heal, healing, then it's putting it in the body. But you know, you can use Choku Ray in a non-Reiki sense as well to put energy into a room, to put energy into a place, a hospital room. Um, you can use it as a form of conduit to bring energy into a place where there needs to be more energy. So it's even though it is a Reiki symbol, it is also a symbol of energy. And that is what I'll be showing you with some of the other, the more alien symbols. I think we'll probably do them next week. Well, I might show you them today, but um, I wasn't able to print out the Tinch Che, but I was able to print out the other one, the Takur showed me about the, the, uh, the deep healing sim symbol. So... Uh, but I want you to know about the these first three first because they are Asui Reiki symbols. Are there any questions at all? I have a question. Sure. So 
I hadn't ever thought of it any differently, but I always start with turning Reiki on. Like I assume that Choku Rei, this this is meaning I am turning Reiki on. Put the energy here. You can do it I, that way. Yeah. I don't know if you do this, but I kind of. Having had chronic pain for a long time, I figured out for myself that all my pain was un, like resolved emotional pain manifesting as physical. So I figure everybody's <laughs> pain <laughs> and their pain body and their aura or their emotional layer in their aura could use that. And then I... Um, I did some more reading on the on Han Shan Zeisho Nen and how powerful that was just in general, not just to send Reiki, but what you were talking about. So now it's just I use all three all the time. Yes, um, there was a point in my early career where I didn't use the Seiheiki very much because a I wasn't feeling any emotional problems. And so I assumed that nobody else was. So that was a bad assumption. Um, what I want you to know is that there, everyone has some emotional pain and some emotional unwellness. No one is pers perfect. No one is, is able to control all their emotions all the time. So Seheiki is very important when dealing with especially those that you know have gone through a lot of hurt, maybe a lot of death in the family or a lot of illness, because they're bringing that in on themselves. As a mother or a father, you tend to do that with your children. You bring in their pain. You bring in their misfortune. You bring in their guilt. And so you don't really, that's really not for you. That is for you to bring in in and take away from them as much as possible, but also to release. You have to release that. And Saheiki helps you release all these kinds of emotional pain, emotional uh, trapped energy, and so that you can be, ah, once again, because it does cause tension. Uh, emotional pain is stressful pain because it's what it causes pain and it makes sick illnesses and sicknesses and it, and of course you're going to you're going to need to have be relieved of this so we will learn the uh please practice writing the symbols uh, until you think that you can do them without looking especially seheiki and hansho zeisho nen because oh when you look in that book, they're written in sort of a, a Japanese way with all these little bumps on the ends of the letters and everything. Do not worry about those little knobs that are at the end of all the letters. Just worry about the actual basic form of the symbol because you're not going to be putting all those little knobs on there and little bumps at the end of the, each of those lines while you're doing Hansha Zeishonen with, with one of your clients. You're just going to be going like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, you know, one, two. And then one, 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 da, 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 da. You're just going to be doing the symbols in your, in your head or, or practicing them in the air. But you're going to have to know them to be able to ignite them in your client. So if you cannot ignite them in your client, then why why are they there? You know, you can't just say the word. But I, I want to take that back. Sometimes you can just say the word, especially choku ray. Choku ray, you could picture in your head. If you can picture it in your head in its full, in the full way that you can, and just say it in your head, choku ray, choku ray, choku ray. It is there, but you should be able to picture it without drawing it, if, if you're going to do that. You know what I mean? Is there any question about that? I was going to share a, 
a cheater tip when one of my teachers taught me is exactly when you draw the line and you bring it down, you make one circle Cho, second circle Ku, third circle Rei. Or, okay. cho, or say it three times, Choku Rei, Choku Rei, Choku Rei. That's exactly how many circles there are in it. So. Right. There's many people do Choku Rei three times. Now, there is a specific finger that you draw Choku Rei in the air with. Do you know that? It is taught to me that it is the middle finger. That is your ch Choku Rei finger. So whenever you're drawing Choku Rei symbols, you must use that finger. So, and I do Choku Rei three times. When I do Choku Rei, I do it three times. And the, the reason for that is you say Choku Rei, Choku Rei, Choku Rei. And the, and I just draw it three times. I don't know why. I don't know if that's correct or not, but that is my way and it works very well for me. So, but whenever I see you, whenever you see yourself drawing these symbols in the air, make sure your hand looks something like this. It is a sign. It, you know, and I had people say, oh, that's a bad finger. Well, only if that's the intention. If it's a Reiki finger, that's the intention of the Reiki finger. And that is how it was taught by the masters, that the middle finger of your either left or right hand, whatever, if you're left-handed, it's your left hand. If you're right-handed, it's your right hand. Or, in another case, if it's your more powerful energy hand, because some people are right-handed, but their left hand has more power in it. Some people are left-handed, but their right hand has more energy in it. So use your energy hand, the one that has the most. But do write all your symbols with the middle finger, and it's not dirty unless you intend it to be. So, um, But that is how it has been brought down through the Reiki Asui Reiki tradition. And so it's beautiful, really. It's a beautiful hand position if you really want to talk about it. I mean, look, doesn't that look graceful? So, anyway, any questions about that? Okay. Um, I do want to show you... What did I do with it? I've been all over the place this morning. I had eight phone calls while we were waiting. Oh, here it is. I hope you can see this. This is a symbol Takur has actually given to us. And it is it looks like a Choku Ray sign. However, look into my eyes. It is many facets. Let me let me put that up here. Can everybody see that? Let me pull that back. It starts as a Choku Ray. It goes around twelve times. Okay. Can you see it? Can you kind put of. it up higher a little bit more, Jim? Is that better? Yeah, that looks good. Now, you're not going to have to draw it exactly like this because who's going to get that? A computer did this. But it is a more deep, it's deep down healing. This is for people with uh deep muscle stress and bone problems. Okay? Did you get that? Deep muscle stress or bone problems. What this does is when you go around 12 times, you don't have to go in this dimension, but you just turn. You do the turn 12 times, and then you finish on the 12th. And this brings the energy deeper into the body. And this is one that Takur has shown us, and it's called the Deep Healing Choku, the Deep Healing Choku Ray. Jim, can I add something to that? Yes. According to Takur, we can uh, use the sample that, she, that you have right there, print it out, and then yep. use our finger, draw it with our finger, and then put that underneath the table where we have the, the patient. That is fine, yes. It has energy on its own. That is correct. 
and all the symbols do. Does anybody need to see this any longer? It's just 12... It's 12 circle. It's 12 uh, times around. Clockwise or counterclockwise? The same as a choku ray. The same as a choku ray. People vary on there. What's your what's yours? It is actually counterclockwise. Okay. Is it counterclockwise to your own self? Like that's how I do it on myself, right? Yes. You would do it counterclockwise on your own self too. Okay. Now that is a very powerful uh, healing symbol from Chakur. She showed me that when I was doing a Choku Ray, she said stop, and I went, "What? What? Who's saying that?" And she, it says, "I'm, I'm Chakur. You know how she does. I am Chakur." So I'm going, "Yeah, what? Yeah?" And she goes, "Turn, do the turn twelve times." And I said, "And because this person has." some bone problems and I'm going okay what's wrong with their bones and they said they, she told me what it was and I, so I worked on this person with this deep bone this goes deeper into the body than the regular choku ray now you might think yeah the choku ray goes all through the body it evenly but this will concentrate on a specific area that needs specific work with deep uh, bone or muscle healing. So that is what that is. That's so cool, especially for your friend, Simon. Yeah. Yes. So, this is my um, first one. It's very wonky. <laughs> all right, because it's hard to really draw. We had to put on a piece of paper just to show you how many turns there were in it. But you don't have to do that distinct amount you don't have to do that separation on the current turns just turn 12 times and move it into the body keep your thoughts moving down into the body through the to the place where it needs to be and that's why there's 12 turns do you think that'll work on ourselves then too of course all Reiki works on yourself of course it will that was a rhetorical question, sort of. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes it will. Any questions about that? Where did you find the picture, Jim? Can we download that picture somewhere? I will have, actually, I had Mark Zinzo create it for me, and I will send it out to all of you before next week. Awesome, thank you. I'm also going to send you the Tinch Che which also looks similar to the Choku Ray, but it is a multifaceted symbol that is not related to Reiki, but is, is a very powerful energy symbol, and I'll send that out to you too, and next week I'll show tell you how to use it. But, I but what happened is this. He sent me the Tinch Che, and it won't print out. And then I've discovered that it's on a read-only file, and I'm going, no wonder I can't print it out, so I'm going to have to have them send it in a new, different form. So, um, I was going to have that for you today, but that's okay. These are extra symbols that you really don't need for your Reiki practice, but they might be helpful with certain peoples. And, um, and that's what I wanted to bring up, that they will be, they are helpful with certain peoples and the tinch che will be helpful in a lot of situations but I, I'd rather have the symbol with me before I start explaining all the different ways to use it. What is uh, this one called? Can you show it again please? Oh, do you mean this one from... Uh, yeah, that one. What's um, it called again? Okay, the, and then the can you show healing, the bottom? It's deep healing choku ray. Okay. It's the one for deep muscle and deep and bone problems. Can you move it a little higher to see the bottom, Jim? Yeah, how's that? That's, thank you. I can see it perfectly, the, all of it that way, but a lot of you, is it not centered? That's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. trying to find the function where you can take a snapshot of the chat on, uh, I don't have the camera. Where did the camera go? Oh, okay. Hold on. And I can make one, and 
if you send me that document, I can make one in uh, well, Illustrator for you if you want. And all I'm, right, I'm gonna have it. Yeah. I'm gonna have it so that we can send it out to all of you. Both of the symbols that I have are um, for everyone here. Yeah. Okay. Is that Thank enough you, for you need me to hold it a little longer? No. The That's only, good. The only right. question I had was if, um, you know how on the... Got it. On the Choku Ray symbol? Yes. How you cross over the middle line? Yes, that, that one like, does it. That one does not. That one does, that stops at the middle line, but um, uh, that's how she taught it to me. Okay. That one stops at the middle line. All right, thank you. And that is correct. The uh, Choku Ray does go over the middle line right here and it just hangs out a little bit. It just hangs out a little bit over the middle line. But um, this one stops at the middle line. And but of course they wouldn't it wouldn't be the, exactly the same since it is Lear in, in its its development. So I believe that they have a lot more bone problems being a cat species than humans, but that would work for humans as well, she said. All right, we'll move on a little bit. Uh, so your symbols are the most important thing that you will learn on Reiki 2. I'm not sure how far how far did uh, Max go into it because I had several phone calls I couldn't I had to turn them off. So, but I'm sure he had a lot of good information. He so, talked about the the business side of it. Oh, the business side, excellent. Well, yeah, Jim, that, Jim, uh, Jim, yeah. Uh, what I didn't cover. Uh, Reiki, uh, in, in, a, in a Reiki 1, we do static positions. What I didn't cover is the movement of hands. I did only Reiki surgery, but not any, any other movements. Oh, like so the Reiki You can describe Reiki your uh, Liran Reiki movements or any other Reiki movements. Right. Uh, if you also have a time to, to mention um, your part of the look at the Reiki business, maybe a little bit. Right. And any advanced Reiki which you think is appropriate, uh, in addition to what we did in Reiki one, would be good. Okay. Well, and, at the end, it, and at the end, do you need me for uh, attunement, or you can do it yourself? Either way is fine. Um, well, come back at around three thirty in about okay. an hour, and we'll do that. All right. Thank you. Keep going. Well, thank you. Very good. Yeah, cause um, all right, I did show on Reiki one when we did Reiki one. Uh, there were some of you that were there. I did show some of the positions for Reiki 1 from the Liren, didn't I? Did anyone, where's there's somebody not at Reiki 1 that did not see them? I didn't see them. Okay, next week what I'll do is I'll have someone here and I will show you some of the, the uh, Liren Reiki positions that are not in the Asui Reiki and I'll have a I'll have someone on the bed and you can see how they're done and that, it would be a good refresher course for those that are on that had Reiki one already you I did show those different hand positions from some of the Lyrids I didn't show them all though and I didn't show any Octorians so we'll we'll do that next week okay when I have a, a uh, volunteer that is laying there I'll be able to show it much better that way so Today I did not take a volunteer because I knew that we were going to do mostly uh, symbols and on how to grow your Reiki business. Now I heard somebody at the very beginning say, can you be a Reiki 2 and also have a business? And Reiki 2 is what they call the practitioner level. So Reiki 2, yes, you can have uh, Reiki 2 and be a practitioner. Now, I would highly recommend that you did a lot of practice before you start a practice or start telling your people that you're going to be taking them in for money. So, uh, plus the fact, some of these people are going to be your friends and your relatives that are going to want to come to you for a Reiki practice. 
Now, those are the people you might want to give a discount to. <laughs> people that you've known for a long time or people that are very close to you. Of course, the I don't know what, uh, what you charge, Max, but around here now, the average price for Reiki is $60 an hour, $1 a minute. I charge $50 an hour. And I and I have about seven regular customers, six regular customers. Uh, seven if you count the one that comes every other week. Yeah, same so, same with me. About the same. Yeah, it really depends on the person. Yeah. So my and there's a few of those. Seventy-five. Oh, what? Is that my practitioner in Winchester charges seventy-five? Wow. Okay. Yeah. You see, and and how many people come to her? I don't know. All right. Never. Uh, well, I have a few that I charge full price to because they picked up my card or whatever. But anyway, let me tell you how the, this all started. Practitioner, I was a Reiki 2 practitioner when I did start my business. In fact, when I was a Reiki 2 practitioner when I met Max. Is that not correct? I don't remember. Yeah, I think I was just a Reiki 2 when I started working on you. So, but anyway... Um, but now I'm a Reiki three and the teacher and everything else. So, but when I started, it was I was only a Reiki two. Uh, but what happened was I had been going to the Reiki share every week for a long time, and a lot of people there were starting to understand that my energy was really good and that they liked the way that I did things and how how things were how things progressed with them. I could help relieve with the with uh, Reiki and the, the people that are helping me, of course. It wasn't just me. But um, a lot of pain was being relieved. Uh, a lot of things were happening. Uh, I would, would be able to be a little bit intuitive with them, saying some people I knew exactly what they needed before I even uh, started working because I touched them and information would come through. So you're going to find that with Reiki, something like that may happen. What happens when you do a lot of Reiki is that it does flow through you. The Reiki energy comes up through you from the earth and down through the universe, and it does awaken portions of your brain that were not awakened before. I don't care uh, who you are. You are affected by Reiki in a very positive way because it is a very, very positive energy, and your intentions are very, very positive. And so it it really pushes your positive intentions to the max. I haven't had a major cold or flu or anything since I started doing Reiki. I know my friends are amazed, but they I they said, "Oh, that's right. You used to get like three or four colds a winter. Not anymore. I don't get a cold in winter anymore. So I sound nasally all the time. That's just who I am." But <laughs> but I don't get colds or flus like I used to because the Reiki energy moves and, and clears you out and give, gives you a healing at the same time as you're healing other people. And you can't help but get that healing. If you're doing it the correct way, you're letting the energy come through you and go out through your hands and you're not forcing yourself to heal anybody. There should be no effort for Reiki whatsoever except for remembering the signs and going to the places that you need to go. There should be no other effort. You shouldn't be like going Aah! trying to force energy into people. It should not be that way. That is not the way it goes because it should be a natural flow of energy through your body and out through your hands and as it goes into your body, it also helps heal you as well. Even if you don't need help, healing or anything like that, it's going to brighten your chakras. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to relax you. It's going to put you in a, a good frame of mind. If you are doing it correctly, all these different things should happen. It's not like Reiki should be a, a difficult job for you to do because it's it's going to be like, Ah, I love this. <laughs> it's 
it's like you're helping others and you're also helping yourself. Now, a lot of people say, oh, no, I shouldn't get a healing while I'm doing Reiki. And I say, why not? The energy is flowing through you. The energy is part of who you are. The energy is, uh, is what's healing the person down here. You, you can't help but be affected by that. And why shouldn't you be affected by that? If you were to turn off that energy going coming through you from above and below, there wouldn't be any energy at all. You sort of have to let it flow through you. So you're going to get a healing whether <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> Jim, but, um, can, can you help me with my marketing lecture? Can you uh, answer simple, simple questions which would uh, enhance the marketing thing? How do you find your clients? Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, there is different ways. While I was getting to that, actually, I was telling uh, how Reiki started for me and how it became huh? a business. There, first of all, I went to the Reiki shares and did a lot of practicing. I did a lot of honing in on what per style worked for me, what hand positions gave me the best uh, optimum power, and what symbols I used at what times that did what for me. And it's all individual when it comes to learning the Reiki skills. You, you practice and learn your style and learn how the energy feels to you. And when it starts feeling optimum, when it starts feeling that when you touch somebody, there's a lot of energy going, you, uh, you know that you're in the right places when you're touching the body. Now, some people do not touch the body. You know you're in the right places when that energy over the body can be felt very strongly or there's a cold spot or there's an, always an indicator if, and you always know what it is because you, your style is set for you. And if you go, oh, I feel a cold spot, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? Does that mean that that is an area that needs energy? I would think so. So if you run into an area where all of a sudden, oh my gosh, all this energy is coming out of your hands, I would think that that's a spot where you might want to stay for a while because, and, and also you can question the client. They might not have mentioned that they're having a stomach ache, but when you put your hands over their stomach, it's like, oh my gosh, there's, is there something wrong with your stomach? And they'll say, oh, yeah, I just did, uh, my stomach was bad the other day or whatever. I uh, remember when let, I let, first... Let me help you answer your question. So Jim doesn't hunt for any clients. Jim is so yeah. excited, so happy when he heals people that people just love being his patients. They just are addicted to that. that feel, Jim is shining when he heals people. It's like really like turning you from sick, unhappy person to a uh, healthy, successful person. That's what Jim does, and that's that's all you do. <laughs> well, actually, no, I, I, I'm getting to a, a, a more business side of it. Um, I so, have a question really quick. Yes. Does applying the symbols um, help with, like, more long-term or just more permanence um, for the effects? Yes, it can. It's all in your intentions. That's part of your intentions and your energy flow. A lot of people uh, will take their intentions and put it into their energy flow, and that makes it more effective. And you can say long-lasting. I, I do what I call long-lasting chokurei, which means uh, I'll intend for this particular energy to last for a long time because they're in a lot of pain. And so I want to do that chokurei and say, this is long-lasting. Because and I'll say to the God or or the spirits or whatever, let's do a long lasting. So this will this area will stay uh, pain free for more than just ten minutes or an hour, but for days. So okay. your intention is important, but uh, and um, and you can intend your symbols to become more powerful as you become a greater healer. Does that make sense to you? It does make sense. I Thank wanted you. to ask slash, well, anyway. So I was, when 
I, we did our Reiki too. I was like the person they were practicing the distance Reiki on, so I went and laid across the yard. Okay. And they made, my teacher taught them to make like a golden chi egg and write the symbols in it for a time capsule. <laughs> and intended a certain period of time. You guys, I could feel it, and I could feel them write the symbols on my... It was the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. You can be very so sensitive. Yes. But as I started my... Uh, that is a very good thing, and I like that, because that was all intention-based. Remember that. It's intention based. Whenever you can feel them writing the symbols halfway across the yard or a hundred yards away, you know that there's energy in this healing modem, so or methodology or whatever you want to call it. And there definitely is. I could tell you a lot of stories, but I'd I'd rather move forward and we'll leave the stories till later. But um, Max was asking me how I really started my business, and that and that was the beginning of it, is doing a lot of practice and going to all the Reiki shares. And some of my customers that I still have now are from that Reiki share. Um, I have two regular customers from that original Reiki share. Now, how did I get other customers? I, I made my card, I just made a little card, and I put it in places where that I knew people would be looking for that sort of thing. And those kind of places are like uh, ca uh, coffee clutch kind of places, their bulletin board, or I wouldn't put them in a place like uh, Target or anything like that, but I, have, I go to a coffee shop that is very popular and there's a lot of metaph metaphysical people that go there so I put my card in there I got three customers in six months from that methodology Be the thing is here's another thing before you put your cards even up put the Choku Ray right on those cards put the energy right on them put the all your healing symbols into that card so that they that when people look at that card and they need heal, healing that jumps out at them that energy of that healing modem jumps out at you okay you may not think that works but it does it is this is my choke this is my reiki card and it has all my reiki symbols in it and when you look at my card you can feel the energy in it and that's how I got some customers because of my intention and I put my symbols into that card I put them my love into that card my symbols into that card and my he, uh, telling people when I prayed over that card I said there I'm here for healing I'm here for you so that is something that you might want to think about because even though it's a piece of paper you can put your symbols in it and your intentions in it and your love in it and it, it does work for you it does work for you now another way that I got customers was hearsay I have a lot of my customers that are very happy go out and tell other people oh this guy's really good you know it's not me it's the it's the all the the spirits that help but they'll go oh this I really enjoyed it I felt great after it was over it was very comforting blah 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 you make them as comfortable as possible of course when you're dealing with healing you cover them if they, the room could be 80 degrees and I swear there's little old ladies that'll say oh do you have a blanket and I'll go sure here you go um, and it's like they have to be 150 degrees under there but if they're happy with it, that's, then I'm happy with it. If they're comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable with it. Or there, some people just say, "Could you cover my feet?" Or could you uh, take off a uh, slip knot and put some more relaxing music on? Or <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, you you need to just make your customer happy with whatever they want. So, and I try to give them whatever they want within reason.
any question about that. But a lot of my customers come from hearsay. I'll say, oh, hi, how are you? I'll talk to them on my phone. And they'll say, my friend so-and-so said you could help me with my so-and-so, you know. And I'll be, saying, I'll be more than glad to try to help you. I'll tell you what hours I have available, and we'll schedule you right now on the phone. And I'll give them a good, uh, and they'll either accept it or not. If they do, if they only can do weekends, well, we'll do that. But um, and I I tell them the price, and I tell them what to expect a little bit, even on the phone. I tell them a little bit what to expect, like. You're going to feel some energy moving through you. It's a wonderful thing. It's a one, The first thing it does is relax you, and then the second thing it does is put you in a healing modem, um, and, you know, you're going to feel great. So, And they'll go, oh, good, yeah. And, uh, and you'll get some questions back from that as well on the phone. They'll say, do you work with chakras? Do you work with kundalini? Do you... Some of the more advanced people ask these questions, but for the most part, you just say, great, I'll be there, and blah, 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 how much is it, and, and then they come. So uh, another way to get customers, well, I'm, I have a place around me called Lilydale. Have every, anybody heard about Lilydale? I'm sure Max has heard about Lilydale. Lilydale yes. is a psychic community, um, and if you say to people, well, the thing is, I, I have a lady that did house cleaning. When she came to me, she was a mess. Her back was hurting, her shoulders were hurting, her legs were hurting. In, in about three Reiki sessions, she was a new person. She was like, oh, my God, and guess what? Her sister lives in Lilydale, which is a psychic community, which is a community of people that like Reiki and things of that nature. So my name got all around Lilydale as being a good uh, Reiki person. So I've had several people from Lilydale come up. They're not close by, but they'll come up and do a Reiki session with me if they're in the neighborhood. So you get the reputation to uh, that you're a good healer and that you treat people nice and you know, you give them a little extra. Some people, when they do raking on people, they'll do uh, 45 minutes. That's it. They'll stop. They'll. I go until I feel that there has been a good healing done. And the very first time I do someone, it usually takes quite a while usually takes an hour and 10 or 15 or 20 minutes because not only is are they never had one before and I'm getting rid of all these blockages and all this crap on the surface but I'm also explaining to them what's going on now I'm not talking the whole time but I will go okay this is what I'm doing now and I I may do that for five or six or seven minutes, but I, and I answer all their questions, answer their questions, because they're going to ask them, do you have any questions at this point, point?" and if they say, no, just keep going, then you're fine, but if they do have questions, listen carefully, this is your client, this is your patient, you have to be like the doctor, you have to listen carefully to what's wrong. And if it's something that you can fix like that, like putting a blanket on or covering their feet or moving them in a way that they just feel more comfortable, that is wonderful. Because, listen to this next part very, very carefully. If they are not comfortable, they will not get a good healing. They must be as comfortable as possible. So if the room is too hot or too cold or too wet or too dry or too whatever and they're complaining, if you ask and they complain, do whatever you can to bring that room in into their comfort space and also if like they can't lay on, on flat on their back or flat on their stomach, work with them and get them into a 
comfortable position. Because if they're sitting there and feeling horrible, I mean, some people will be in pain. There's no question. No matter what position that they're in, they'll feel pain. And so it, the most comfortable they can be is with a, just a little bit of pain, then you're okay. But if there is somebody that comes into you and they walk through the door and they're not feeling ta pain and they lay down on your bed and start feeling pain, this is not a good first sign. Um, you must make them feel as comfortable and at as ease as possible. Any questions about that? It is your customer. You want them to love what is happening to them. You want them to embrace this healing. Yeah, I want, want to mention. mention. Yes. I want to I mention. Want to mention uh, the room. Uh, what's, uh, what's happening? What's happening? Uh, that is. Uh, that is. An echo? An echo? No, you're fine. All right. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, I know what's wrong. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Now it be good. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the music. Uh, Jim is not big into playing music when he travels, but at home he would put the music on. And he would put it quiet because he has to speak, especially for the first client. His room is really clean. Jim is not a good... Uh, not very good in keeping order in his house, but his uh, house, in, I mean, in, uh, like basement is a mess, but the Reiki room is beautiful, uh, very well uh, vacuum cleaned, always in good order, and everything is very clean and nice. <laughs> oh, Jim is frozen. Okay. And then um, I uh, found that when I travel, just the music from your cell phone is perfect to bring the the vibration up. You have to bring it to the proper clean state and you can uh, usually smudge with uh, smells like um, sage but but the music from the cell phone which I have just keep this mp3 files the whole uh, folder of Reiki, Reiki music and uh, just click 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 mute your phone put the music from the phone and that is sufficient to to uh, just change the vibration right away. The, the, the music starts calming the, the client, and then you do the rest. That's yes. what I wanted to say. I well, do have a question about that. Because I will tell you what, I have had Reiki sessions where whatever her choice of music just agitated the crap out of me. Like, it, it made me really uncomfortable. Just the tempo okay. was too high or whatever, the volume, and I'm like, can you turn it off? Do you ever do um, silent sessions? And yes, how I have. And, and how do you feel about that? Let me tell you how my music goes. And I have. Uh, I always ask if it's too loud or too soft or whatever. And I always la ask if if they like the music because there is certain instruments. There are like people that do not like piano music. There are people that do not like violin music. There are people that hate the harp. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, all that little plucking sounds. Ah. So I asked them, actually, that's one of the things I do for comfort, is say, I do have this kind of music and that kind of music and that kind of music. What would you prefer? And they'll be like, oh, okay. And then you make it, you, you regulate it so that it is good for them. And my basement isn't a mess anymore. But anyway, <laughs> just to let you know. Um, I just you just you work it for the customer and I do do silent sessions because I have um, chimes in my room in the room my Reiki room and some people just prefer to hear the chimes just the chimes moving and some people that drives them crazy just chimes you know ah so um, you have to find out what your customers like Get several different kinds of meditative CDs, some with waters and sounds in them and, and uh, thunderstorms and, and different kinds of music, and others with just, I don't have anything with drums in it that I play, 
for any of my Reiki sessions because drums, drums seem to interfere That's with... That's the kind, the, like the Native American kind with the drums yeah. in it. That agitated me. Yeah. Well, I don't sense. use drums because that is what happened. I had a drum sort of uh, program and I come to find out that not anybody really liked it. So I used much more calm, beautiful, uh, relaxing music. And I do use harp music. I do use piano music. I do use violin music. Depending on the customer, they I have customers that know exactly which CD they want to hear when they come to my house. I have I know I know my clients, and I have one client that listens to Enya the whole the whole session. Very soft Enya music. She, she has some instrumentals, she has some vocals, but they will listen to Enya every session. And I know who these people are and I know what they like. After a while you get to know your customers and your clients and your patients and you will know what they want and so that before they get there you are, you're already prepared. But with someone new, ask them if they would prefer piano or... or I can send you... Actually, I could probably... I have all these CDs into in my machines uh, recorded into my computers. If you wanted a sample of something, I could send it to you maybe. So we'll see. But um, I have relaxation tapes. I have stress tapes. I have uh, mountain and water tapes. I have I have about a stack of 12 or 15 different CDs that I... Uh, use for my uh, sessions and if I have to go out to somebody's house which I do that's like a doctor on call I take my little uh, um, actually I I bartered with um, Max to get a boom box and I take that with me with the CDs that I uh, about four or five CDs so I have a choice and I play that for them while I'm doing their Reiki along with my portable Reiki table if you're going to be a practitioner, get a Reiki table because you're going to be asked to come places that they won't want to come to your home. I do mine in my living room, which is perfect. Everybody loves it. and I, I burn candles for a nice scent and keep it all very structured in here and, and like uh, Max says, very clean and vacuumed and you know no dust anywhere so people feel uh, comfortable because if you're messy they'll they'll that's the first thing they're gonna notice Jim Jim yeah. um, I just wonder uh, part of the, the part of the reason why we are so happy lucky in this uh, Reiki school is that uh, part of the class is channeled Yes. So I just because we can speak about music maybe next few classes. You know, Reiki music is something. Yes. Even the fact that they don't use Western notes, they use some special notes. It's like the whole topic for next few classes, right? Robbie would agree, right? <laughs> well, the music is important. It's part of the atmosphere. Yes. So if they're going to um, start doing a practitioner thing, they should know about the music now. So, but yes, we can talk more about that later as well. But that's all you need to know for right now. I just wonder if you could channel someone to bring the more galactic Reiki and oh, yeah. uh, and advanced Reiki, galactic advanced Reiki. Any, any teaching uh, would be wonderful, well, I think. Uh, well, for next week, I'm, that's all. I'm I'm going to be all about the galactic Reiki next week because oh. I'm going to have somebody here to show them how to do it. I'll do it on people, and it'll be they'll be able to see it. So, so if, if maybe any of Reiki masters could come, of human Reiki masters could come and teach, that would be wonderful too. Oh, and yeah. we, are, we are broadcasting right now. If you don't know, we are live broadcasting, so it all goes on record. So whatever happens is uh, will be uh, heard by others, which would be great. Okay, very good. Excellent. So where was I? <laughs> uh, you were on... Uh, about music and cleanness of your uh, thing, but if you want to go channel, that would be great too. Okay, well, I have a couple more things to say, oh, and then we'll course. maybe go into a channeling session. We haven't done any attunements yet today yet either. 
I so, did I did the first attunement, so we can do the second in about half an hour. Okay. But I, I'm going to go back to that because with the Tinch Che, uh, that's one of the symbols that I'm going to be teaching them next week. With the Tinch Che, it has its own attunement for that one particular symbol because it has so many uses and powers. Ish is the only one that gives that attunement. And there's only one person that I know of that has that attunement, and that's Mark Zinzo. And I now have it, other than him, I'm the only other one. But I, I have to learn how to give it. I know I saw him do it, but I don't really haven't learned how to do it. So, but that's another thing to look forward to next week, is the attunement for the Tinch Che and the symbol of the Tinch Che. So it's going to be very popular, I'm sure, because it's from Ish, and he gives an attunement. You have to be attuned to use it, because that's how powerful it is. It's um, used around the universe quite a bit. So anyway, um, is does anybody Ish have any questions at this point? Yes. Where is Ish? Is Ish Arcturian? No, Ish is from a planet called... But let me see if I can remember. Um, he did say where he was from, and I can't re remember the planet. But I know that there's a lot of ascended masters there, and a lot of it's a very it's like a a club kind of planet. It's, it's where like they a go. Reiki club. <laughs> no, it's a, no, it's like a, a ascended masters club planet, where mm -hmm. all the ascended masters from all over the universe go. He's and, a Syrian light being. Because okay. he attuned us, yeah. remember? And I have yeah. actually called on him with some Reiki things. For yes, he's very cool. He's a very cool... But the name of the planet he's from, I can't remember. It's Ish... Ish... Uh, Ka? Ish... Sha? Something like that. It's uh, two symbols, or two syllables, and the first one is like Ish or Is or Ish... Or something like that. But anyway, That's okay. um, it's fine. There's... he is going to give an attunement for the Tenche. Tinch Che, I'm sorry. Um, and it is. In, How do you spell that, Jim? T I N C H. And then the second word is C H E, but it's pronounced Che. Tinch Che. And I do have that. It is the Tinch Che looks like the Choku Ray without the top part, but it's used so differently. You'll see what I mean when I tell you. Uh, when I show it to you the next time. It's actually sideways. It can be up and down, it can be sideways, it can be it's crazy. But um, galactic more galactic stuff next week for sure. Lots of galactic stuff next week. But I wanna hey, I want to get I to have a Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask if Max, since he's such a good writer, if he could write do a write up on the those Reiki symbols, the glass with a little description and stuff. And okay, I'm going to try to get those out to you, and perhaps I can do that. Yeah, because they're already drawn and everything. They just have to be sent to you. Except for, you know, the Asui ones you have. But the Galactic yeah. ones, I, I have, they're already in the computer and drawn. I just haven't sent them out to anyone. I'd like to, um, you know, since I can't see very well, if there's any way to get drawings of the Galactic Reiki hand positions, that would be really great. Oh, okay. I'll work on that. Thank you. You're welcome. And any other questions? Uh, also, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to change the subject a little bit. We're going to go back to um, Reiki clients. One of my regular Reiki clients every week is a dog. His name is Bodhi. And I do Reiki on this dog once a week. 
for a half hour. Now, he's not always in my arms or I'm not touching him the whole time of this half hour. Sometimes he's a very frisky little dog and he jumps all around. But when he's sitting there doing the, and I'm doing Reiki on him, he just absolutely loves it. Now, let me tell you something about dog and cat Reiki. Um, their solar plexus chakra is on their back and not on their stomach. I know you turn them over and I uh, have them in the baby position where their feet's up in the air and their head's right here. Well, anyway, um, their solar plexus are on the back, so you have to turn them over if you're going to work on their solar plexus chakra. But that's the only difference. The thing is, they don't. You don't need to do uh, Reiki on a dog as long as you need to do Reiki on a human. Humans take in a lot of energy. Dogs can take in a lot of energy in a short period of time. So I usually only charge like ten dollars or fifteen dollars for half an hour for a dog because they're not in your arms all the time and. And, you know, a price point is very important to the owner as well. And there is an exchange of energy between you and the dog. And you shouldn't make it a big price point for an animal, I don't think. Does anybody have any comments on that? Max, do you have any comments on that? Is he still there? Here, yes. Um, also to dogs and cats, um, but not to clients, mostly... On a, uh, when I meet, uh, we, we go with dogs to the dog park, and uh, sometimes uh, sick dogs come there, and I explain to the owners that I do Reiki. And uh, usually they permit me to do that, and dogs permit me to do that. So so I just uh, sit down and kind of, or just bend down and do a little bit of Reiki, especially on the, on the back of the, of the dog, on, how do you say, the pelvis, the pelvis area. Yes. The pelvic area is important on a dog because not only is their um, digestion system very down there as well, but a lot of times that's where you're going to have problems is in the, the lower part of the spine area for dogs. Uh, back legs, uh, you know, urinary tract infections, kidneys, things of this nature, everything way down in the back there. So... Um, Make sure that when you're raking your dogs and cats and animals that you make sure that you spend some time right down there toward the tail in the back around the guts area and um, make sure that they get some if, feel and see if they need energy there. That's a very important uh, area for the dog. The other area, because my dog that I wor work with has uh, seizures, the brain is in charge of seizures so I'm always working on his head and neck and his you know down around the buttocks area and the butt back legs because those are important areas for dogs does anybody reiki their animals yes I reiki other people's animals yes it is good to let them know that you Reiki animals because they might just go, oh, really? You Reiki animals? Oh, well, my dog has kidney problems. Maybe you can help. And, you know, it does help dogs. Um, I can tell you many stories about dog Reikis. Uh, the, my favorite story is that I have the very sluggish dog that I worked on, um, and the owner said, "Oh, you're not going to put any life into this dog. It's a very sluggish dog. The only time it ever moves is in the morning when it has to go to the bathroom." So, actually, the dog was taking on the personality of the owner, and really mm -hmm. not being itself. So when I rake this dog, he he seemed just normal for a little while. And then he, the owner called me and said, what did you do to my dog? He's running all around. He's jumping on the bed. He's eating more food. He's doing all this. 
And I said, I told you that it would activate your dog. <laughs> your dog will feel better. And he was, like, totally amazed. So, but he was happy, but he was totally amazed. So, um, but a lot of people will see their very big differences in the actions of their dogs in the first couple days after their Reiki that they haven't seen since they were puppies and things of that nature. So, it's a fun thing. It's a really nice thing. I have a addendum. I in the first book that I got on Reiki, it talked about cats don't they will sometimes take Reiki, but they don't often like to because they think they are the inventor of Reiki, and they are, probably. Well. <laughs> and, and sometimes they don't like it. But I've also had my girlfriend take her cat who's on its deathbed, but then, like, instead of, like, she knew it was time for the, her cat to die, but then she gave it Reiki, and then it didn't die. Anyway, <laughs> well, cats do Reiki. We've had several. We've had witness to several cats that jump up and put their arm over somebody's foot or leg or knee or stomach or head. They lift one paw and they do Reiki on their owner. They won't do Reiki on anybody else but they will do it on their owner. And we have witnessed that several times, even on camera. A Hyan from Sweden's cat, uh, his cat puts his hand over top of him and reikis him every now and then. And there's several people that I know that their cat does the same thing. Zenaida's cat. Yes, there's cats that do reiki. And I don't know how to explain that except to say... I've seen it with my own eyes. So uh, they put their one paw over part of the body, like the knee or the foot or the leg. Usually that's where they do it. If somebody has a knee or a foot or an egg problem, they'll just put their hand over top of it, and they'll hold their hand there. And you'll go, look at that. What are they doing? And it's just like they're sitting there doing Reiki on that part of the body. And then they will do that for like a minute, and then they'll jump down. Um, but... It is true. I've seen them do it, so I don't know how to explain that. But I think I, my perception was that it had something to do with the purring. The purring? The purring itself was the healing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's, a That's interesting. I don't know about that. I would have to look into that. Any questions at this point? Have you had a break yet today? No, we have not. Let's get a, have a break, and when we come back, we'll do attunements. How's that? Sounds good. A few minutes, 10 minutes tops. Can we say that? About 27 after, or no later than 3.30? Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Very good. Did you want to cover anything else, Max? No, I think it's fine. Okay, good. So we have next lesson, and we'll kind of, whatever we miss today, we'll uh, do it next time. Yes. Uh, we are still on record, and your pants are beautiful, and uh, the Coke, too. Are you, uh, is it a Reiki Coke? It's diet Reiki Coke. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know so, you're not supposed to. You're so, not supposed to do diet, are you? But yeah, you know but what? you know what? If you reiki it, then it cancels it out, right? Yeah. Well, you can eat anything you want with intent. Right. I can say this bowl of French fries is intended to to make my body feel wonderful and be healthy. <laughs> I do it. I noticed my girlfriend, who's a reiki master, like she would. <laughs> Stop before her food, and really, my yeah. teacher also said she would say thank you, have gratitude, basically the uh -huh. five things you say, but have gratitude for the hands that prepared it, for the plants or the animals that gave, the, you know, like gratitude and basically the symbol over the food, holding just 
for a sight, she does this every time we go out to eat. Like, I thought, the first time we went out to eat with her, I was, like, can very confused. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, anyway, I mean, and again, this, like, if I were having a traditional Reiki class, this may not fly, but since there, I'm learning this whole permission slip thing, <laughs> yeah. basically, I mean, Okay, the other day, you can use the Reiki symbol virtually on anything. My teacher is like, she does it before she gets in the car. She does it before she does anything. She does this symbol on everything all the time. I'm like, yep. wow. That's Barbara Carlton is the same way. She will use the Dicomio, which is a Reiki 3 symbol, mm -hmm. on literally everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Your dicomio everything. Yeah, I did and it when, to my new when, computer. Hopefully, this will. Be. When you learn how to become a teacher, you will learn that you will put symbols into the walls. You will put symbols into different things. I do do that in my house. Actually, I started taking it more seriously, like after Reiki two, and so you know to clear energy and to do symbols on my space. It's very yeah. important also, I, well, I'm not going to go there. Never mind. I'm just going to drop that. Okay. Because Reiki, Reiki is neutral. Reiki, or Reiki is good. It's not, but I have a neighbor who is into other things and she put like shields and she like put she locked down our house. Like, Brooke could not feel any energy. But it wasn't Reiki energy. Mm -hmm. Like, so, I mean, Brooke got really sick because she could not feel any energy flow. And I called and I had a ding. I'm like, could you lift your, you know, in case Satan spawn come and attack our neighborhood <laughs> shield? <laughs> well, you protect yourself from all that kind of stuff. The, so, anyway. It's actually a lot. You see, people give Satan and, and negative energies power where I don't. I don't, I don't either. I don't I believe it. But I say, I do. you know what? I just take their power away from them. I just yeah. take it away. I was like, you have no power here. And they'll be like, uh... That's how I feel, generally speaking, about because big they things. Take the power away because if they're not using it for the right thing, you can intend that the, that their power would be unuseful around you. Mm -hmm. it's, I actually, it's, you guys, I did this with poison ivy and mosquitoes this year. I don't get poison ivy. I always have in the past, but this year I said my intention was. My body is no longer attractive to mosquitoes or something like mosquitoes are not attracted to me and I did not get bit all summer and when I noticed myself in a vat of poison ivy, I was like, my body no longer responds to the toxins in this plant right. <laughs> and I didn't get poison ivy. <laughs> I never get it anymore either. My friend goes, oh, you're touching poison ivy. I go, it's all right. I don't get it. They go, well, don't touch me. I get it. And I'm going, okay, I'll wash my hands. But I said, I don't get it. So I have always gotten it. I was just don't get it. I was so thrilled. I still get the law of attraction. Going, but it's only because they love me. <laughs> so lucky. <laughs> so what's the weather like for you today? The weather here is gorgeous. It's sunny. It's nice. You know, and um, it's not that cold. It's like 60. Yeah. So I can't complain. It's warmer but, there than it is here. Huh. I think it's 60. It's either, but it's high 50s or 60s. Okay. Are you learning a lot in Reiki too? Um, or just I've already I've it. already taken a weekend class of Reiki two, like in person. So this is just a refresher course. 
Yeah. I just, I just wanted to see you. I really just, well, at first, it said if we were already certified, it was free. We could just watch on, but I paid for today. Oh. Because I don't know what they, it said. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm really curious about the galactic. The galactic will be yeah. interesting because I'm going to have people. I'm going to have a someone here next week. Then I can work on and show you some galactic moves, and also show you my acupressure mute moves as well, and maybe a little Octorian if they'll help me. I need help with the Octorian, so because I do understand what they do, I don't know how they do it exactly, or what which ones they do first. But it's a sec, it's a. Um, Procession right? of, um, of nerve touchings on the body. Yeah. They touch the nerves in a certain order, mm -hmm. and then they finalize it with a fi with one of the main nerves, and that so they're all connected and they do a certain thing, <laughs> which is amazing to me that 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 if you hit the nerves in a certain sequence, it's like typing out a letter or something. I don't know. Right. So, that it's a healing kind of thing. Uh huh. So. I've had it's a weird thing sometimes when, so like when we would practice on each other. I was doing one of the Reiki masters, like she's been mm -hmm. a Reiki master for twenty years or whatever. But my hands sometimes in a session <laughs> and or giving they will like my fingers will do weird <laughs> things. All right. Do you know All what right. that is? It could be a lot of different things. Actually, in some forms of communication, in some places, mm -hmm. your fingers do all kinds of weird things. But it also it's also manipulating energy as well. Let me explain that to you because this is an energy place on the palm, mm -hmm. on the wrist, and on the tip of each fingers. And if there's cer and certain fingers, you can feel different kinds of energy in them. Mm -hmm. There are 32 kinds of energies, 27 of which are positive. Mm -hmm. So you. I would like a list of those. That would be neat. Yeah, I would too. But I know that that's what I've learned that there's 27, and when there are certain healing practices that use all 27, and they use colored discs for to to um, to represent the energies, and they take the discs off this chain. And they'll use that disc for a specific thing, and then they'll put that back and take a different disc and use it for a specific thing. I saw somebody do this, and I was, like, fascinated because the person said they had this really fantastic healing, and I, I have to get in touch with this guy again. I have his card, That's but I forget the name of the healing. Hey, the weirdest so, thing happened. Yeah, yeah, the case full of stuff. Huh. So, have you seen, well, there's lots of different kinds of energy healing, but last time I did Brooke, she, okay, she had a big sad because I think she empathed the Paris thing. Oh. And she didn't know about it, and she couldn't figure out why she was, like, in so much pain, and so she looked it up, and I came, and I said, let me do good, good, Reiki. But this is the first time this has happened, is that when, as I... Gave it color, flooded my brain. Different, like it, it would stay on a color for a while, and then it would go to a different color. Like it was, it was very cool. It was I don't know if you watched a recent webinar where they talked about the power of color and technology has mm -hmm. changed. Now yeah, color, I did, actually. Uh, it color is becoming a more important thing in the metaphysical world. Mm -hmm. Even though our you, we always had the chakra colors, it's right. going to become important in technology as well. Yeah. I just wanted to add about the galactic. Uh, basically, the main principle is as with the usual Reiki, you try to guess which of the stars or star energies would be most beneficial for the for this particular patient for this particular condition. And you kind of, in your mind, intuitively think, like, how about Arcturian, how about Yael, how about Pleiadian, how about Liron, 
and how about reptilian and snake energies and things of that sort. And then you invite them and um, or you just kind of play them as, as you go and when you feel it goes, you just embrace it, you kind of become a child for it. I find snake snake uh, tunes like, I will talk more about them, but snake uh, whispers work really well for me. They open certain channels and um, and I can connect through these channels much better. Uh, well, the Indian would be very light and very enlightened, very uh, sophisticated and technologically enlightened. Syrian would be very spiritual. Arcturian would be, uh, I would just imagine an Arcturian, um, like very uh, quick and high pitch and very loving way. Yael, um, more of the fingers position and just plays them and send energy that by, you know, they're very powerful in this. And um, uh, Liran would be very strong and emotional, strong and emotional. And Angelic, obviously, and White Angelics as well. So when it comes, you just feel that it comes. And the same thing in meditation. One day you, f you focus on one energy, another day on another energy. And as it comes, when you invite and it comes right away as a flash of light and happy breathing, happy vibration, you know they came. So, so you, basically that's the basis for galactic Reiki. You invite a certain energy and it comes. Very good. Do you think it's a, like, like, how do you choose? So, for instance, I say, like, okay, I invite people that showed up to, like, I, there's a, my healer's healer is really powerful, so she, as they came, it was the first time I ever heard anything about this, she's like, hello, Archangel Michael, and she was like, Ganesh, Shiva, Metatron, never even heard of Metatron before, like, all these, two, she named all the people who were there, assisting, and that, I mean, I just, cried buckets like how I can't believe they would show up for me like that is so amazing and beautiful and powerful oh my god so I figured if they were willing to show up for me that at least I have in my head those you know X number are in my head but sometimes it'll occur to me like oh well Ish was you know and Usi Usei did our thing too and then but like if I don't know, do you think it's okay to just ask, like, general, like, like whoever is of a higher vibration um, and interested in participating with this? Is that... That's is what that I would say at every session. I invite our higher friends and just, they, they come. Okay. But you, Max, can tell who they are, right? I just feel by um, excitement, by vibe. I mean, if I invite and I see the flash of light and especially the heaviness here, very physical, physical uh, sensation, nothing supernatural. Sometimes it is the answer, but most most often it just, you invite angelic energy, and it just, oof, it comes. You feel like the whole body like uh, vibrates and you know that they just answer to the invitation. Angelic well, is most powerful to me. So one of the interesting things that happened in this one session is she goes, she asked me three separate times, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Or or do you see anything? And I said, well, there was just a huge flash of white light. She's like, that's Christ energy, which gave me a whole different concept of Christ energy, which is really good because I had a really bad relationship with that before. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Uh, that's understood. I understand that. Yeah. Um, so it was the first time also I was introduced to the idea that Christ energy was something completely different than being a Baptist or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Right. So that was that was really neat experience. When you started talking about snake energy, you know, Max, my head and my spine and my ears got all hot and tingly. That was really That's weird. Naga <laughs> energy, yeah. Naga. All right, who is ready for the entombment? Because this one will take a little longer than the last one. Um, 
Are you prepared? You um, Max, are you prepared to do an attunement, or do you want a Takur to do it, or what? Yeah, you channel whoever you like. Well, they there's two that want to come in. It's either Takur or Ish. Those are the only two that are be involved in the Reiki classes, as far as I know. But somebody else might come in by surprise, but those are the two that said that they would like to be a part of it. So, I Chakur would like to do an attunement for who is ever here. Yeah, we would be blessed and honored by either one of them. Is Kate, Katie here? She was here. Just a second. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yes. okay. Because are you taking the class or are you just sitting in? I'm taking the class. Okay, dokie. Because Turkur said it's Katie there, and I was like, okay, I'll ask. Because I can't see the name. <laughs> I can't. Oh, she. Oh, I see why. Okay, I, I understand. Alrighty, very, very good. Um, I will bring her in, and she will do the attunements. The now the. I want to make sure that she does the right ones. We have Katie Douglas. Dan, are you just sitting in, or are you a student? I'm in student capacity, Jim. Okay, and same with Alex. Alex, are you a student also? I just want to know who she's going to give attunements to. Oh, yeah, so I'm always going to be a student. <laughs> okay, and then we have Carl and Kim. And, of course, Max and Michelle and Sabrina, Simon, and Valerie. So I think she'll just give everybody an attunement. Is that okay? That's that fine. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Yeah. This is Kim. My, inter my Internet's kind of bad. Can you do me first in case I lose a connection? Absolutely. I'll ask her to do you first. <laughs> Thank you. All right, because these what these attunements take a little longer. They're Reiki too. There's more symbols. There's more. Uh, there's more of a process to it. Uh, somebody just rang my doorbell. One moment. I think it's the mailman. Any questions so far or comments? I hope Stoked. it's the mail. I hope well, it's I hope it's the mail. mail. I had the cops uh, ringing my doorbell. So. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's been a day. Did you choku ray them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I choke. I choke. Well, if I could do anything else, I can't because I'll go to jail. So choku ray is a good way. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh. Very good. Yes, it was the mailman. Yay. He had a special your, delivery. Is that your package? Uh, not that one, no. Oh, okay. That's I'm supposed to be that tomorrow. One. That should I'm be tomorrow. Okay. Okay, very good. I'm, I'm going to mute. Alrighty. Um, so I will bring to Kerr in, and we will start with Kim. But these attunements are a little longer, so we'll go till 4 o'clock for sure. Yeah, you can okay. skip me just to save time. I will uh, uh, suck the energy in from others. <laughs> All right. I want everybody to put their hands in the prayer position because it is important that you be in a submissive position to accept these gifts because you, these are – this attunement is – several gifts that you're beginning will be getting the attunement of all these symbols that will make them more powerful to you the acceptance of the energy that comes along with the symbols and the ability to use them in a wonderful and effective way so I will bring uh, to her down here and um, she will talk to you each individually how was that pretty good Perfect. Mm 
Greetings, I am Dekur. This is a special time for all of you for your second degree of Reiki accomplishments. The attunement for this is very strong and powerful because these are symbols that mean a great deal to your planet and to many others. These symbols have come through the universe not alone but with many others and these are the ones that you've chose to use in your civilizations. Therefore, these are the ones that you will be attuned to. The future holds many other symbols for you but these ones are the ones that you will be attuned to today. And thank you for your listening and for your learning. Please learn these symbols do not take it lightly that they are come into your life because they are, it is not a coincidence and it is not something to take lightly when they have come into your life and they have meaning. I was told to start with Kim. Kim, put your head toward the middle of the screen and I will put in your head the Reiki symbol the Choku Ray. The Sehiki. The Hanshaze Shunmen. Now lift up your head. <clears throat> Put your hands in an open and outright outstretched position, touching the left under the right. In your hands okay. I will give you another set of symbols. And now put your hand in the prayer position. Okay. I bring to you the energy of these symbols. Be blessed. Use them wisely. Use them for the good of humankind and for healing and for blessing others. Use them for uplifting the spirit of the earth and to understand that there are symbols and energies outside of your own that can be used to help you in each and every day. Give the thanks for these symbols and use them with love and great intention. You are blessed and I thank you for accepting this attunement. Feel the energy come upon you in your hands and in your brain, in your heart, in your chakral system. Much love. Much love to you. Thank you, Tucker. You are welcome. Alex. Andra. Alexandra. Put your head toward the screen. Yes. Now, hold your hands out in the positions that I have spoken before, the left hand under the right, out in a cup-like position, so that I wouldn't put these symbols also into your hands. Okay.
Alexandra. You are have now been empowered with the symbols of Reiki 2. Use these energies wisely and with love and healing intents. Go and be a great healer. Be a user of these wonderful gifts. The spirits have aligned with you and are happy that you have accepted these. And we know that you will be a great healer and a one that will use these symbols for goodness. Thank you also for your chakra alignment and for all the things that are happening with, within your life. Take this energy and use it wisely. Move forward in your and embrace it in a stronger way that you may be empowered and walk through the earth as a healer and one who understands great love and giving. Thank you, Ticker. I love you. I love you as well. Katie, put your head toward the screen. Katie, with this attunement, one moment, put your hands out with your left under your right. With these symbols, I give you the second degree of attunement, that you may rise up in power with your healing. Already you have seen some effects of this healing Reiki power, but now it will be increased, and you will see even greater things happen. Go and be useful. Be giving and loving and sharing with all those things of healing and understanding. Much love to you. You are moving forward in a beautiful way, and your light is getting brighter. Use your wiki wisely, and move forward with a great blessing. Thank you, Tikar. You are welcome. Douglas, put your heads towards the screen. Yes. And I will apply the symbols into your brain. And now put your hands out, left hand under the right at the fingertips so that I may tune the hands with these symbols as well. With this attunement come as much power and energy and healing. Be blessed. Know that your hands now are healing instruments. 
that the energy that there is in there now can help others and can help build a future for you as well. For the energies of the Chokure are not only energies of healing, but are energies for the world. Much love to you, and go and be bold and understanding of all that you have received. Love and kindness and joy be with you, and energy and healing throughout. All good intentions always. Be blessed. Thank you, and you'll be blessed as well. Thank you very much for love. Thank you. Carl, put your head toward the screen. And now produce your hands, the left under the right, at the fingertips, so that I may put these symbols in there as well. Thank you. With these symbols, I have given activation to much energy in your life, healing power for yourself and for others, and great intent for positive use. Go and be well. Go and heal others. Make sure that your intention is always good, and that when you feel the hands activate, that you know that there is someone around that needs healing. You need not know who it is, but just send the energy out to them and just say Han Shao Zaisho Nen and they will know. Because I see that in the future your hands will activate and you will not know why. This is why I tell you this. Go and be blessed. Bring the intent of healing to all the world as you know it. Much love and wisdom to you. Thank you, Tikar. Guru Dan. Put your head toward the screen, please. Okay. And now lift your hands so that the left is under the right at the fingertips. Left under the right? Yes. Okay. At the fingertips, yes. Okay. With this attunement, your energy increases yet another stage, and you will find that your hands will want to heal. They will want to be touching those and giving healing to others. That your heart 
will go out in healing to others as well. Your thought processes will be attuned to the healing process. Be great and loving and healing as you move through your life. You have many talents and joys, but healing will be one of them. May you have a wonderful and a beautiful existence with the intent of healing on your mind. Thank you, Tucker. You are welcome. Michelle, put your head toward the screen, please. I will put the symbols in. And now lift your hands and put the left under the right at the fingertips. Thank you. With this attunement of Reiki 2, which you've already received once, but this is a reinforcement of that energy, a double layer of positivity and healing, a double layer of thought processes that go into the intention of healing. Please be aware that you are now engaging in a time where you will be healing your daughter even more love and guidance to you as you move forward with your healing processes with the processes of healing yourself as well with those that are around you that need your energy be not selfish but send it out and love them all i know that you will for this is your nature and your kind much love to you and accept this attunement with great joy and much more effectiveness. Continue your work. Thank you, Chikar. Much love. Much love. Sabrina, move your head toward the screen so I may put the symbols in. Thank you. And now lift your hands and put the left under the right finger so that they might be given the symbols as well. With this attunement, I bring you great energy, great love, 
great understanding. Your hands are now free to be healing hands to those that wish healing. You are blessed. You have much wisdom and understanding. Go forth and use the energy that are in, is in your hands to heal those around you. Help them and guide them. Also use the energy within you to clarify buildings and places that you go so that they, they can be whole and new again. Much love to you and use it with great intent. Yakawa. Thank you, Tucker. Simon, please put your head forward. Thank you. And now present your hands with the left under the right fingers so that I may put the symbols in the hands. Uh, with this attunement, great energy has entered your hands and your thoughts. Be wise and use them wonderfully and with great intent. You have the ability to be a great healer and a great user of the symbols in many ways. Be prepared to use them at a moment's notice when someone from a distance is not feeling well. Your Hanshazation then will come in very, very properly. Also, the Seheiki has much to do with your family situation. So therefore, I attune it to you in a greater way than ever. You will be a great healer, and those of your family will look up to you, although they may not show it. But you will see that they are respectful of this energy that, it, that you have found and is now attuned within you. Amen. Choose you. Thank you, Tikur. I love you. I love you as well. Valerie, put your head toward the screen, please. And now with your hands lifted up, put the left under the right so that I may put the Reiki symbols into the hands as well. With this attunement, it will bring you peace and happiness and joy to know that your hands are attuned to heal others, that they have the energy of, of much healing in them. It will also give you peace of mind to know that you will be able to use this on anyone who gives you permission, and that your Han Shonen is also powerful over a distance. Use it wisely and often. 
It does not matter if you know who the person is that needs energy or not. Send it out to them because you send it out to the world, and those that will receive will receive it. Much love to you and wisdom and guidance, and thank you for this opportunity to put the attunement into you so that you may be of a greater power. Go and be a great healer. Thank you. Now, for all of you, I am standing behind you. I am standing before you. I can do this in both forms, but I want to reach out to you. Reach out your hands to me, and I will touch them one by one. My gift from me to you, 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 my gift from me to you. The Attunement that I just have given was of the Lyran type. It will activate the Lyran symbols when you learn them. And so that you will be attuned to them, even pre-knowledge of them. You know about the deep healing Chokure, and there will be another that you will learn for the Lyran. But you are already activated to use them in your way. Now from behind, I'm standing behind you now, and I will put my hands on each of your shoulders and say to you this. Kim, be of good peace and love. You are attuned to this healing methodology. Alex, be of good will and good courage. You are attuned of this second Reiki methodology. Katie, I am with you and your attunement is great on this second degree methodology. Douglas, your attunement is complete. I give you great joy and comfort. You are attuned to the second Reiki attunement. Guru Dad, feel this energy I am giving you. You are attuned to the Reiki tune methodology. Carl, Feel this energy as I give you the Reiki 2 final portion of the Reiki 2 terminology methodology. Max, I am behind you now, and I attune you to all the methodologies that you need at this time. Michelle, feel my hands on your shoulder. May there be great love and understanding and great power in this second attunement to the second methodology. Sabrina, my hands on your shoulder and I attune you to the second degree of Reiki methodology in your world. Be of great a power and assistance to many. Simon, I put my hands on your shoulder and tell you of your healing attunement. It is great, and you are a part of the second degree healing methodology of Reiki. Valerie, 
I put my hands on your shoulders, and I tell you about the second degree of Reiki attunement that you have received. Use it in great power. I love you all. I will have a blessing for all of you right now. One moment. Mohata Yakahia. Mohata Fuanshi. Shun Fun Fua. Arahota Nono Huyeshan. Oh, Hariyarata. Katan Sandia. Mohaya. Lohata. Wadiya. Water. Yeah. May great blessings fall upon you. May this attunement work for you in your daily life, not only when you're thinking of healing, but when you're thinking of the energies of the spirits. May it come upon you and remind you of the different energies that you have within you and make it be powerful and make it be useful and make it be part of who you are and let it change you just that, that little bit so that you are a more full and more loving and more considerate and faithful human being. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you, Tukur. Thank you. Thank you. Many blessings. Thank you. Much blessings. Thank you. I am done now. Thank you. Thank you, Tukur. Blessings to all of you. It was my joy to give you this attunement. Blessings. Much love. I feel the energy of the attunement taking hold as we speak. Namaste. 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 Hello? Hi, Jim. Hey, Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Hey, Good. how are you? Fine. <laughs> was, did she do okay? Yeah. It yes. was great. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you. She likes doing attunements. <laughs> but she was very happy that you were there to get them. So much love to you all. Much love, Much to, love you. to you, Jim. Love Thank you. Thanks. Much love. All right. And I will see you for next week's class. And next week's class is going to be chock full of galactic stuff. So this was more of a regular a Sui Reiki 2 with the symbols. Please learn those symbols. There will be a test. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a test. I want you to draw the symbols in the air for me, and if you can't do that, then you didn't study. So, um, but I know that you'll do that. So, and also practice if you can on your uh, with your your uh, new attunement and with the hand positions and the different things. You're all a wonderful bunch, and um, I can feel your great energy. You must. It was a good attunement and a powerful attunement, and you are um, doing great. So learn, 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 and next week we'll do some galactic stuff, and that'll be a, something fresh for you for next week, okay? Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. And um, Jim, I just had one question on this. It's always better to draw it with the hands than, than to have it, like, under them? Well, you, no, not necessarily. If you intend that that symbol has power and you have it with you, you can put it underneath them. That, that is not a problem. 
that just will help you with your Reiki uh, with your Reiki as you go along because they're aware. You see, their belief systems, your belief systems, are aware that that is there, and that can be very helpful, actually. I think. Okay. So, addendum right, to her so, question. Yes. So, wouldn't you want? You wouldn't want for the symbols to be seen by somebody coming into your office, though. Um, not really. You yeah. want the, the symbols are for you to use, and you wouldn't want them asking you questions about these symbols because they're not attuned to them, and they might expect them to work for them, and they're and without the attunement, they don't work so good. So. Uh, so, yeah, they're sort of part of the As Asui rituals that give you the attunements and things. And so as you move up through the layers of the Reiki uh, powers, you have the new information. And you really don't want to share that unless they already know about it. What I want to say, uh, the purpose, uh, for, for the decoration, don't use them, uh, but... If you need a cheat sheet when you start learning them, you can hang them temporarily on the wall and just draw from them on the wall and then and then just take them off. Yeah, because I was thinking more like under the table. Yeah, sure. Like no, taped nobody, under the table? Nobody like would see it. Oh, yeah, there's, so it's very under many, there's places where you can put it that no one will check. I mean, you look... They're going to be laying flat on the table anyway, so you can have it in a little book and oh, just open up the book. And uh, whenever they get, while they're getting comfortable, you can open up your book and let and look at the symbols and do that, do it that way, and use it as a cheat sheet or whatever at first. But it is best to have them in your memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you just okay, draw practicing, so they'll come really quickly. You'll be surprised how happy you'll be when you learn them because they're just, they're there and they do add to your treatment. They add energy to your treatment. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. Alrighty then. Okay. It is much love to you. I'm going to go get ready for my next things. Um, right. Thank you. Much love to you. It was yeah. a, a wonderful class. A pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Thank, you, yes. Thank you. Yes. And I love the interaction. And if you have questions, send them to me. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. All right. All right. Okay. Save them. Write them down and save Thank them you. for the next class. How about that? Yes. Write oh, down yes. your questions. That's a great idea. Yeah, so everybody can get the answer, not just you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, right, um, bye, everyone. Max and Jim. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Much love thank to you. you. Bye. I want to tell you before you hang up. Jim. What?